Good morning guys, we have just taken the dinghy to land this morning. We've just sailed to the island of Kalatra. It's a tiny fishing village and there are just fishermen everywhere. That's what this place is known for. It's a very quaint, cute little town. And we've just come to the beach at low tide and there are clams everywhere. So that's what we're doing this morning. We're gonna have a dig around, collect a bunch of clams and cook up a clam dish, a tomato-y garlicky dish. Hang around for that and um, check out Kalatra with us. It's a pretty unique spot. I'm Elena and this is Riley and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. We've got our crew member Andre with us. <laughs> Say g'day. Yep, with the hat, the flipper hat. <laughs> we all love your hat. How good is this? I just can't believe how good our jobs are. So La Vagabond is just anchored out there and here the tides in Portugal are like 4 metres. So during the day at some stage all the sand comes down. It's like a whole new world, it's crazy. I think this is um, probably the most intense tide we've ever experienced. So possi quite possibly our dinghy is going to get trapped if we take too long here. So we got to work hard. Faster crew, faster! Look at this. Per tide, Andre found out from some of these guys over here that they can get up to 20 kilos, which is a lot. I think we're going to get about 100 grams, maybe. Big one. We better get home because these clouds are coming in. Captain's orders. Right, what are we doing, mate? I'm cleaning the sand out of the clamps. So Andre's the local here and he found us a really basic Portuguese recipe. It's basically just clams with tomato. So what we're gonna do first is saute some diced onion and garlic and then the tomato. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna add the crushed tomato, the white wine, and then stick the clams in last. And we, you wanna make sure they're really clean. So Andre's cleaned them twice. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Really easy because we have limited ingredients on the boat. Shit. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't eat them. <laughs> Andre hates onions. What's really cracking me up is the chopping board. <laughs> we gotta keep everything light here on the boat. Riley won't even let me have a real chopping board. I'm literally cutting this with my eyes shut. Don't put your fingers in the way, Andre. <laughs> Holy crap. I can understand why the locals stand out there all day finding these shells. They must do it a lot faster and more efficient than we did because <laughs> we didn't get anywhere near 20 kilos. Hey, speak for yourself. I got a lot. Lenny did put a few shells in that were definitely just shells. Well done you guys, thank you. Yeah, in Australia we call these pippies. Oh. <laughs> I told my mama and she said to me, it will happen if it's meant to be. I told my daddy he's the only one. 
the bottom of the bowl is a very clam meat dense environment. So good down there. He's in love with somebody else. Lenny, your dad's, it's cold out here. You stay there, mate. Has been nice. <laughs> <laughs> you guys check out the sunset. It's one of those sunsets where it makes a cloud just light up orange and pink. I hope he comes back from Buenos dias, amigos. It's my job to take Lenny for a walk this morning. Elena and Andre are going for a run. We're gonna go for a little explore in town and adventure. We've got some rubbish to take into town as well. So we're killing three or four birds with the one stone. A couple of birds. Yeah, poor old birds. We're traveling again. This place reminds me of um, Cape Verde actually. It's like a little fishing village, uh, lots of seagulls, lots of boats. Isla de Calatra is a small fishing island where the locals live almost entirely from the ocean. There are around a thousand people living here permanently year round and they're spread over three villages. There's actually a cool project going on here called Kalacha 2030. It's a goal for the whole island to become energy independent, to produce water for self-consumption and to find efficient ways to treat and manage the island's waste, all by 2030. small leak coming from somewhere that we can't find. Uh, I've dried up the little patch here and we've poured water all over this hatch and all over this area here which is where the chair is and, and the deck fittings and all of these places here and I really can't see that it's coming from actually anywhere and I'm tempted to think that it's just gone away. Same thing another very small leak forwards that we'll try and locate 
but I think we're going to have the same issue. I, th I think it's it's uh, small enough that it's just too hard to track down. But uh, we try. There's nothing, and it's all that's all dusty. So it's not coming from there. That would be wet. It wouldn't be dusty. What have you broken? <laughs> we broke it. No, we did. It's a sunshade for the hatch, so the roller wasn't quite rolling properly. Oh, yeah, the spring we'll have is to inside. Put, yeah. So we'll have to put it all the way to the yeah. end. <laughs> so you need to slide it out and then put it in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it needs to be... This only activates if we roll it first before putting. And oh, then yeah, 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 quite right. Oh my god, how long did that take us? <laughs> I don't know. 20 minutes? Yeah, probably half an hour. Half an hour to reassemble our mistake, having gotten nowhere. How do you properly use the plunger? I swear this is a really hard plunger. They usually just go up and down. It's really hard. Look how much force you're having to use. Yeah, but I didn't. I can't. Push I didn't it say down. it was easy. I said you weren't doing it right. But I'm doing the best I can. Never said you weren't. Okay. I just said what you were doing is not doing a single thing. No, it thing. did though. It unclogged it. I swear to you that it didn't. This is a disaster. What happened? Lenny just. I gave him a bucket of water to play with and he pulled it inside and it fell over this. Right after he spilt a whole bowl of my eggs. Seven eggs? Seven nice. organic eggs, I nearly cried. Now we got last night's mush and only four eggs. <laughs> I'm so sad. Up to no good this morning, Renton. I'm making chia seed pudding for breakfast. It's just oats and chia seeds. Um, Coconut milk, honey, cinnamon, cloves, that's about it. And it's really, really nice. Some berries and banana to top it in the morning. And you leave it in the fridge overnight and that, uh, and the milk, <laughs> and the milk soaks into the chia seeds, which expands it. And, um, and the oats go all soft. Yeah, and you'll have some if you're a good boy. She pushed my hair aside and took a deep breath of my neck like she always does. Then she stood up and disappeared into the bedroom. I walked to the kitchen to pour some coffee for her, and when I turned around, she was right there in front of me. Just had the best day, laying out here under the stars, listening to an audiobook, listening to Untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's this, it's part inspiration, part memoir about the joy and the peace you discover when you stop striving to meet the expectations of the world and start Trusting the voices inside of you. And I, Elena, would like to counter that by recommending to people Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow, which actually suggests that you shouldn't trust your inner voices and goes into great detail as to why. Always listening to audiobooks on the boat, especially recently in isolation. If you haven't tried it yet and you'd like to give it a go, they're offering you a 30 day free trial. With that, you get one free book. You can pick any book, they have thousands of titles. Yeah. Feel free to head to www.audible.com forward slash SLV or if you're in the US you can actually text SLV to 500 500 to get started. Hope you guys love it as much as me and you'll definitely love the book Untamed. This one's for you Andre. Thank you. Just a quick Patreon announcement. We would love to invite Stefan Brown on board. He's from Queensland. He's a fellow Aussie. Um, as you know, we're hosting an event this year. I've got a mate called Stephen Brown. I hope he didn't win it. Is he from Queensland? He lives in Queensland. Brownie, is that you? <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Stefan. And thanks so much for your support. We're really looking forward to hopefully meeting you. Let us know if you could come. And um, yeah, we still haven't filled all 20 places yet, so we'll be calling out someone else next week. It's a bit of a weird day. 
weird vibe. We kind of weren't welcome here anymore. Not much is going right tonight. I've made Riley do a gear review. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh.